Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. This video will focus on the multiplayer, which is for many people the meat of the game, certainly is for me. There may be a video on the single player, there may not. It depends if I can endure the FOV problems that it happens to have. Thankfully, the multiplayer does not have such field of view problems. If you looked at my port report yesterday, you would have seen a veritable suite of options, including field of view all the way up to 90, which is lovely. Now, I've spent most of the day playing this, and as you can see, I've got to rank 27 in the process. I, I actually kind of look a little bit silly here, don't I? I look like a Guardians of the Galaxy cosplayer, but regardless, I've played a great deal of the multiplayer, I would say probably about six, seven hours up to this point, and I'm ready to give my first impressions on it. So, we do this pretty much every year, don't we? We have a look at Call of Duty, and usually our conclusion is about the same, and th that is to say that the game is about the same. This time around, however, it's just a little bit different, and perhaps different enough to pique your interest in the franchise once again, and God knows it needed that after the failure that was Ghosts, both in terms of the financials as well as the critical acclaim, the lowest rated Call of Duty game in a long time, and abhorred by many fans for a very good reason. This time around, however, they put the talents of Sledgehammer behind it, as well as collaboration with High Moon, the studio that brought you the rather excellent Transformers games. And they have come up with a futuristic spin on Call of Duty with a big focus on mobility. Alright, if you want to just skip to the gameplay, you can do that, but the point of this video is also to demonstrate things like progression and customization, which is of course very important to the multiplayer experience. If you don't want to know anything about that, well, you can skip. But you will be missing out on some quite interesting stuff. So let's have a look at create a class first and see what we can actually do with this. We're going to jump into here and I'm going to pretty much wipe out absolutely everything and we can start afresh. Now what you might notice at the top here is that it's adopt the pick system from Black Ops. However, this time it is pick 13. And of course the reason for that is that they added some new stuff in, specifically exo abilities and exo launchers. In this version of Call of Duty, you have access to an exoskeleton. You have it by default. This exoskeleton allows for a number of different moves including power slides, double jumps, adjusting your trajectory mid-air. You can also do boost dashing with this thing as well and ground slams. It really increases your mobility and vastly increases your speed. You can also equip it with an exo ability and a launcher, which consists of a variety of different grenades and utility items. So let's create a class, shall we? So here's our primary weapons. You've got your a selection of assault rifles here. Some of them fairly familiar, some of them futuristic, as you can probably see, and you'll also get a little bit of information about what these things actually do. have a, a version of the AK here. This is just a kind of reskinned version of the AK-12. And you've got some, some more futuristic looking stuff here as well. If we have a look at SMG, similar kind of situation. You've got an MP5 style weapon here. Although, interestingly enough, some of them have some, some rather odd little... Features Like, for instance, the first five rounds of the KF-5 have increased damage, which is a little bit interesting, to say the least. In the case of the ASM-1, the more you fire, the higher accuracy you get, but the lower the fire rate. And I indeed actually have a variant of this, the ASM-1 Sweeper, which is of enlisted kind of green quality. This is something that you can get in-game. The game actually has weapon drops as well as cosmetic loot drops, and these are generally just minor variants of existing weaponry. So the ASM-1... Compared to the sweeper, well, the sweeper has a slightly lower fire rate, but slightly higher damage. And uh, I believe it also looks a little bit different as well. So you can get things like rare weapon drops. They're all variants. They all have advantages and disadvantages. But it's an interesting little addition to the game, to say the least. Now, if we have a look at that, you've got sniper rifles, mostly kind of rail guns and things like that. That's a bolt-action rail gun. I even have, again, a variant of this, which actually has multiple stats changed. Fire rate is pathetic with this thing, but it's got enhanced mobility, lower handling, and higher damage. So this thing hurts a lot. I think it is actually the most damaging one, as far as I'm aware. Although I have a feeling the Atlas 20mm might be a little bit more painful. Shotguns available here as well. This is actually an energy weapon, if you can believe that. And this is a fully automatic shotgun. And then you have heavy weapons, which include what's basically a lightning gun here, the EM-1, which I very much like. It's quite nice. doesn't have any ammo, but it overheats. You've also got the XMG, which is a set of double, uh, it's double miniguns, which attach to your arms, and you can also lock down, quite like the Terran Republic Max in Planetside. Unfortunately, I found the lockdown function to be completely useless, because standing still in Call of Duty is a terrible idea, so I'm not really sure why they put that in there, but it's there regardless. And then you've got a, a fairly standard sort of machine gun there, and whatever the hell that is. 
and this thing. So there you go. And then you've got some specials as well. The MDL semi-automatic grenade launcher and a heavy shield if you so desire. So let's nick something that I already have some points in. Let's go with, say... Uh, let's go with the EM1, actually, because I've unlocked most of the stuff for that. And this is just a different skin for it, so we'll just grab that. Now, attachments. There are different attachments for different weapons. I think you all know that. Unfortunately, the game goes back down the old Call of Duty route rather than the Black Ops route of saying, oh, well, you have to get a certain number of kills and attain certain things before you can get certain sights. I hate that system. Why? Because as far as I'm concerned, sights are very much a, one, cosmetic, and two, personal choice. Like, one doesn't really have an advantage over another. So to say that the red dot sight is the first one you get when really you probably want something like the ACOG is frankly irritating. Although what I will say is they've made an effort to differentiate each sight this time around, whereas previously the difference between a red sight and a hollow sight was not particularly large, and things like the reflex, they all kind of did the same thing. This time around, all of the sights do something very different, so I can I can dig that. That makes the unlock system a little bit more acceptable. So we can throw a red dot on that, we can throw a tracker on it, which means that once you've hit somebody, it causes them to show up on the minimap. And if I want, I could add a third add-on, and that would require the addition of a wild card, which automatically adds if I click this. So that's pretty good. Have a look at the wild cards here, you'll see what's going on. You can take another kill streak, you can take an exo launcher instead of my exo ability, so I can get a lot more grenades. Primary gunfighter, take a third primary attachment, take a second secondary attachment, take a primary weapon in your secondary weapon slot, you see what's going on there. And each of these will take one of these points from the 13. So if we look at secondaries, right now I'm sitting on a 45 pistol, which is pretty good, and the RW1, which is a one-shot railgun, and requires breach break action, so you've got to reload this every time. Very, very damaging weapon, one of the most damaging in the game if you can hit with it. And then you've got launchers, a stinger, which actually fires a number of missiles, and then you've got a laser-guided missile here, and whatever the sod this thing is, it looks interesting, I want it. And a crossbow available too. So you've got a decent amount of selection here. Now, if we head to perks, pretty similar thing. Pretty similar thing. So you'll notice that there are a number of perks available, and I can get a second one in one slot if I want by adding the perk, the wildcard perk one greed. So if I want both overcharged and lightweight, I can get that, so you can see how that works. Now, if we move to the exo abilities, this is where things get a little bit interesting. So you activate an exo ability by hitting the Q button, and this uses an energy bar that the exo suit regenerates over time. And it's all sorts of things, like you can deploy a portable shield, which is quite handy. Uh, that will absorb a lot of bullets coming to you, so hopefully... You if you get caught off, you can deploy your shield on your arm, you can deflect some bullets, then hopefully this guy runs out of ammo, or one of your friends comes along to help you. Overclock, gain a speed boost, mute device, silence your footsteps. This is kind of similar to the abilities that are available in Titanfall, and you'll notice some similarities. It's, it's obvious that the game has been inspired to some degree by Titanfall, but in this case, there's a lot more abilities to choose from. Stim, that's extra health beyond the normal limits. There's a cloak, there's hover, and there's also ping and a trophy system. I would love to tell you what the trophy system does. I couldn't. I have no idea what it is. I haven't unlocked it yet. And then you've got your launcher grenades. Quite a selection, actually, including things like threat grenades, which scan enemies through walls. You've got variable grenades. You can cycle through stun AMP, threat, and smoke. You've got your Semtex and your frags, which work the same way as a regular Call of Duty game. And then you've got tracking drones, EMP grenades, explosive drones, spike drones. You've got a lot of choices here for the launcher. Pretty cool. And then, of course, you have score streaks. Now, these are not kill streaks. They have changed the thing fully over to score now. So completing objectives, objectives as well as getting good quality kills will also get you additional score and allow you to unlock these. What I've noticed is that they're quite tough to get and they take a reasonable amount of effort. Getting something like a Paladin is very, very difficult indeed. And even the care package is quite costly. Now, what's interesting about this is that you can customize these. Now, if I hit F1, this is going to allow me to alter the cost of calling this down, but give it additional bonuses. So I can... If I put drone delivery on, it's going to make it land a little bit slower so I can get there. It adds thrusters like to seek, it, seek you out before landing. Yeah? So it will actually come to you. And then you can get fast pickup, which means you collect your own one faster. You can hide it from the enemy radar. You can even get something really expensive, which allows you to keep your points through death. So you'll eventually get one of these, but it'll cost more than double. 
You can even increase the chance of getting something cool from it. This is really, really awesome. I love this. And each of these has uh, a very different set of customization, as you can see. I can add rockets as an alternate weapon to the Warbird. I can allow a joining player to mount an additional MG turret. I can give it extra time. If I change over again, the XS-1 Goliath suit, I can give it an underbarrel rocket launcher, homing rockets, and the trophy system if I want. Th this is a really nice level of customization, and it's far beyond anything I've actually seen in the game before. So I applaud them for that. And of course, you can take up to four score streaks if you wish. So overall, customization is surprisingly good. It lets you do create a class from level one, although you don't have a lot of options, and it gives you a set of fully decked out default classes, which are all very competitive and work pretty well. And this time around, you've got just a, a massive level of customization, which increases the number of available playstyles, which I like very much. And you can go directly into the firing range to check out anything you've picked. So I like that. It's very, very good. It's actually a really awesome customization system, and it goes beyond just customizing your weapons and things. You can customize your soldier to look as you wish. So you can pick both male and female models, which is great, and then you can pick from one of four custom outfits, which you can set up. All sorts of things like eyewear, helmets, and a lot of these are unlocked through play, by the way. You get them through loot drops. I have an elite Maelstrom helmet that I got as a drop. I also have the Headhunter helmet, which is a temporary drop. So you can get temporary loot items like the Red Baron cap and all sorts of things like that, and the Bloodshed helmet. I like this a lot, and there's a lot of cosmetic customization available here. You can really make your soldier look exactly how you wish. You can even customize your exoskeleton. I have an elite Nigerian armored exo, but I could also use any of these. And they'll just look a little bit different. It's nice. It helps differentiate you from the rest of the pack. And let's be honest, we're all a little bit vain and we want to make our soldier look as cool as possible. Well, you can do that, which is cool. You also have the ability to customize emblems and calling cards, as you might imagine. You know, nothing really out of the ordinary here. I think you, you know how all of this works. And you've got things like your challenges and combat records and clans all set up through here as well. So ultimately, the customization in this game is absolutely stellar as far as I'm concerned. It is really, really good indeed. You can even, when collecting loot, basically disenchant it for experience. Let's say I don't want my Maelstrom helmet anymore. I can redeem it for XP if I so desire. So I can level up faster. And this is all, re this is all a bunch of really nice ideas that have been thrown in here. And that's not even talking about the gameplay. So let's get into a game and talk about the gameplay. We're going to jump into Kill Confirmed, I think. Fairly popular mode here. And I'm going to show you what's going on here. For the most part, the game uses fairly similar game modes. If I had any, I've got two gripes. One, it doesn't use dedicated servers. Now, they did say there would be dedicated servers of some description, but they were very, very nondescript when they said that. So I have no idea what they actually meant by dedicated servers, which is unfortunate. Secondly, the game has a, a kind of limited selection of mixed up playlists. So I like to play a number of different game modes and the game doesn't actually have many playlists that let you do that, which is annoying. The only one seems to be Ground War, which will vary, ow, which will vary things up. Don't get me wrong. It lets you play a couple of different modes together, but I love playlists that are very much mixed up and allow you to pick a bunch of different modes and just enjoy something a little bit different every time. Unfortunately, for some reason, there don't appear to be that many playlists that do that, and I'd love to be able to customize my own playlist to jump into things like that. But again, game doesn't have that. This is, of course, a, a problem with not having the ability to customize your own server, and something that I dearly hope that they enable at some point in the future. And yes, I would happily pay for a server that would actually allow me to do that. Hello, what do we have here? Now, you might notice I'm sort of jetpacking around the place, aren't I? And being awesome in the process. Well, so the exosuit completely changes the way that this game actually works. You have the ability to double jump. You have the ability to dash. And this is very Unreal Tournament-like. If you double tap... Hello. Goodbye. If you double tap, then you can boost into the air. And then what you can do is if you hold forward and then hit shift, you can also air dash, which will allow you to alter your trajectory, kind of like this. So you have a lot of control and you can boost every couple of seconds. So you have a lot of mobility, which I very much enjoy. Not only that, but you can do ground dashes as well. Very nice. Very nice. You can do ground dashes. These are very much like Unreal Tournament. You double tap a direction and you dash in that direction. Now, not only does this give you a lot of mobility, which makes playing the game, in my opinion, a crap ton more enjoyable, but it deals with one of the kind of legendary problems that I personally have had with Call of Duty, and that's the time to kill. 
Now, the problem with Call of Duty, especially when it runs on peer-to-peer, -peer, is that more often than not, the person that spots the other guy first and opens fire, as long as his accuracy is decent, is going to win the fight. Because the time to kill is very, very low, and he didn't really have the ability to dodge. However, now you do. So if you stay hypermobile all the time, that effectively re increases the time to kill, because it makes you much, much harder to hit. Very, very important. That, that actually is a huge... God damn it. That is a huge, huge change. It cannot be understated just how much this changes the dynamic of the game, at least in my honest opinion. Not only does it mean that verticality really matters, and I'm not talking about Battlefield's definition of verticality, where they really just pay lip service to the idea. No. Verticality in this game is hugely important. It's really, really vital to flanking and getting the drop, sometimes quite literally, on your opponent. You even have a ground slam that you can use to do that. If you so desire, it looks something like this. And this will actually do damage. Now you combine that with a bunch of different exoskeleton abilities, and suddenly you have the ability to really use a very, very mobile playstyle, but simultaneously augment it with things like cloak, the ability to mute your footsteps, extra speed, extra resilience, a shield. So while it might be a mobility-focused game, and this indeed might end up being a problem for those of you who like to be snipers, because I've certainly found that sniping in this game is a lot harder because of how fast people are moving, but you still have the ability to play in the way that you want to. And I dig that very much. Not only that, but of course the addition of the wide variety of wrist-mounted grenade launchers and some pretty nice selections of different weapons that really just don't act in the same way as regular Call of Duty weapons has helped diversify the lineup of the arsenal quite well. Now this, I love this weapon right here. It's basically a lightning gun and I've had great success with it, frankly, even with the hip fire. If you know how to aim, this thing is really, really good. Get, 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 get over here. There we go. Thank you very much. Although you don't want to sustain fire too much, because if this thing overheats in the middle of combat, you are in serious, serious trouble. But I, I showed you some of the interesting weapons earlier. The idea that there's a gun where the first five bullets do a little bit more damage. The idea that there's a gun where it'll slow down the fire rate, but increase accuracy the more bullets you fire, which is an interesting idea. You can start off kind of spraying and praying, and then you can finish them off with a more accurate burst. That's a nice little idea, isn't it? They've done quite a bit to differentiate a lot of the weapons. It's not just a case of, hey, well, yeah, we're going to put an M16 in it because the game needs an M16. Well, this is far in the future. The game doesn't need an M16. And while they haven't been able to resist the idea of putting an AK-12 in it and an effective variant of the MP5, the fact of the matter is that they have got away from the majority of traditional weapons. Now, of course, if you still like playing with bullet weapons, it's fine. You can do that. But they have put some decent variety into the bullet weapons and given them nice little bits of functionality that are just a little bit different, as opposed to it simply being a case of, well, we're going to have an org, we're going to have an AP, uh, MP4 and all that kind of stuff in there. MP4? What's an MP4? An MP5 and an M4. You get the idea. Now, taking into account all of that stuff, does it play differently to the other Call of Duty games? Well, while the weapons are fairly varied, you are still dealing with the same sort of low time to kill, high fire rate, low recoil hit scan weaponry. For the most part. Not, not entirely, but for the most part. So if that was really putting you off the game and you were looking for more kind of counter-strike or maybe even something more realistic in terms of the recoil and having to manage it, well, that is not here. You're still using the same sort of hit scan weaponry. There's nothing particularly out of the ordinary with that. But I think the changes to the movement system make that a little bit more acceptable. It's kind of the same with Titanfall, really, because Titanfall had very Call of Duty-style gameplay as well, but we commented that actually that was kind of okay because it introduced a very new movement system. Now, there's going to be comparisons with Titanfall, and I think that some of those are fair and some of them aren't fair because really the movement system is actually nothing like Titanfall at all. Let's uh, swap out, and we're going to go and try... We'll just have a look through some of these players. Do I want to do Infected? Eh, in fact, it might be interesting. We can certainly give it a shot. I'm not even sure if anyone's actually playing it. Oh, looks like we do have some people trying to play it. It's not a very popular playlist by the looks of it. Glorious Kevin Spacey, 60 FPS. Love it. Absolutely love it. We might not get into this one. That's a, that's a little bit of a shame. Okay, well, we'll try something else. We'll maybe just go to go full on ground war. There we go. That seems like a way to go. A lot of people are playing ground war at the moment, so that might be worthwhile. Okay, so yes, it is not like Titanfall. 
It's taken some ideas from Titanfall, there's no doubt about that. Mobility is apparently in again. The idea of activatable energy-based abilities, these are all very Titanfall-esque. In fact, it even has exosuits and a sort of large, heavy exosuit that you can summon in. But the movement system isn't anything like Titanfall. It focuses more on Unreal Tournament-style boost dodging and things like that, as opposed to the wall-running parkour that Titanfall is known for. And with Titanfall, you can acquire almost infinite speed, really, by just, just kind of learning the map and wall running to the best of your ability. Unfortunately, people are now bailing on this one, so we'll try again. A We'll just maybe go to Domination. That's usually fairly popular. Hopefully. There we go. Much, much easier. The whole idea of learning the level and wall running was very important within Titanfall. This time around, there is no wall running that you can mantle very easily, but it's mostly based on you can boost every couple of seconds. You can either use it to boost away and dodge, or you can use it to boost into the air. You can then ground slam. You can boost the second time while in the air to change your direction. That's what it's all based on. And it just means that the game is a lot faster paced. Verticality is very important, and you can get in some really cool dueling midair with some very interesting weapons. I'm going to grab... This is my running gun loadout, so I'm going to go and give this one a little bit of a try here. And I've got to say, I think the map design is pretty damn good. They have taken that into account. There are some optimal routes around the map. There are some really nice places to ambush and slam down on people. And in general, the maps are just fairly interesting. Some of them also have some... I wouldn't say dynamic changes because they're not dynamic at all, but about halfway through the map, something will happen, like there'll be a tsunami and it'll mean that an area of the map gets flooded and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, it's an idea that's kind of nicked, I think, from battle from Battlefield 4, but it works fairly well, honestly. And I, I enjoy the fact that they've made at least some effort to make the maps a little bit more interesting. And just the map design seems good from what I could tell. I haven't really been caught out by people spawning behind me. The spawn system seems to work relatively well. Flanking is still a very effective tactic. I'd say even perhaps more so than previous Call of Duty games. Just because of the vertical element, you can fall down on people. Or alternatively, you can use the jump packs to sort of reverse course and get behind someone. Whereas otherwise you wouldn't be able to do that. And you just stay alive a lot sodding longer if you are someone that's kind of managed to really get a handle on how the movement system actually works. It really keeps you alive. There we go. Hello. And I was able to get in there with a cloak, which is always good. And there's a couple of extra kills as well. Just going to unlock me a little bit more stuff. I mean, just look at how quickly you can move and how, how much mobility you've got compared to previous COD games. How much dodging you can legitimately do. It's not just the case of you to say, oh, I'm just going to dive on the floor now and hope that he doesn't hit me. It's like, no, screw that. I'm going airborne. We're going to have a freaking battle. Look at this thing. I'm in the air. That's awesome. That is absolutely fantastic. And that is something that Call of Duty has not done. And it really does make it feel like a different experience. Yes, the gunplay is similar. Absolutely, no doubt. And that was a terrible assault drone. It is very, very similar. And it's going to be very familiar. And if you didn't like the gunplay in the previous Call of Duties, chances are this is not going to change your mind. But the movement might. Consider that. The movement might. When you suddenly have access to all of these rooftops, then many more routes become available. Oh, that was disappointing. I should have changed my direction. Gotta be careful with jumping forward because of course it's very predictable, but if I were to jump forward and then kind of dash to the side and you can do that a couple of times on the way down if you've got the time for it, then things become very interesting all of a sudden. It's like, hey look, where am I? Which direction am I going? Do you know? I bet you don't. You just don't know, do you? Good way to really mess with people. Speaking of messing with people, there we go. Look at that. And then we just dash backwards here. We can kick the cloak in the play. That is a turret. We don't want to be anywhere near that. Outside of that, though, you're still going to be playing the kind of same old Call of Duty modes, but really, with the addition of the exosuit abilities, things become a hell of a lot more interesting. What I will say is the peer-to-peer -peer has problems, there's no doubt. Every now and again, you run onto a server where there are lag issues, and host advantage is a very, very real thing that I don't think they've done a particularly good job mitigating. You'll notice people warping around every once in a while, and I have to imagine that as a result of peer-to-peer, -peer, we're going to be seeing hacking becoming a problem. That's So they really need to get private servers that you can share with your friends where that won't be a problem sorted out pretty damn Quickly! Oh dear. Where'd he go? Oh, I got him! Someone else got me, though. I gotta say, I, at this time, am really kind of excited about... Damn it. About Call of Duty again. And I haven't been excited about Call of Duty for a very, very long time, and rightfully so. What we have here is a really good PC port, and a studio that is willing to actually take some goddamn risks 
which is lovely because, let's be honest, they haven't done that in ages. They took some real risks with the movement system. They may have alienated some fans. And you know what? In that case, I'm kind of saying, you know, good. You know, make them learn something else, for God's sake. Now, this is a fast-paced variant of a venerable but, frankly, kind of tired franchise. And really, I love the fact that I'm now playing it and finding enjoyment again beyond it simply just being a popcorn shooter that gives me some fun unlocks every once in a while and gives me some nice and easy kills. No, it seems like there's way more to learn this time around and that the skill ceiling is higher as a result of the movement and that things are just more fast-paced and more enjoyable. And that's lovely. That's absolutely wonderful. Not to mention the fact that it runs really, really well, I might add. I mean, this is running solid 90 frames per second pretty much all the time, even while capture is running. Occasional mild drops, but again, capture software's got quite a lot to do with that. And currently, the game doesn't support SLI as of yet. Once it does, I would imagine the performance is going to get even better. I certainly hope so. But I have had no performance issues with this whatsoever, which is a massive departure from Ghosts, which had some real performance problems. This is a, a good PC port and a well-designed iteration of the franchise that has really freshened things up, as far as I'm concerned. And I am happy to say that. I really am. That's, that's lovely. I don't go into every Call of Duty game looking to hate it. I, I don't know what it is about some people, like, they're just kind of going into a game and saying, oh yeah, I'm just gonna hate this game. Really, why? I mean, what's the benefit? What is the benefit of that? Surely you want good games, right? Do you have a personal vendetta against the franchise? I don't. Absolutely not. I, I want the franchise to be better, and as it turns out, well, Advanced Warfare is exactly that. It's a crap ton better. It's faster, it's got a higher skill ceiling, it's got better weapon variety, it's got better character customization. It's got that really cool loot drop system, which allows for customization in terms of cosmetic and variant weapons. It, your leveling up speed is pretty much just right, as far as I'm concerned. It's got more game modes. It's it's better in pra practically every way, with the exception of the fact that it's still bloody peer-to-peer, -peer, and that might be a good reason for people not to play it. Also, the fact that they, they are planning on putting zombies mode in as a DLC. Now, if I recall correctly, they didn't actually promise that they were going to do zombie mode. They didn't mention that, and they have kind of this exosuit co-op thing going on, but... Hello. Goodbye. But that's going to be part of the season pass, so... If you're looking for zombie mode, they don't have that. I'm not really looking for zombie mode, I personally don't care about it. So I'm not really bothered by it, but of course the season pass is one extremely bloody expensive and two Probably gonna split the community again as it always does. I really hate the fact that they sell maps It's really not a good way to go as far as I'm concerned, but hey there you go. I'd also like to thank them for actually adding in proper text chat and voice chat support. That's all in the game, and of course, you can mute it, which is lovely. You can just click an option to mute the whole damn thing if you so desire, which I'm very, very happy about indeed. Screw you. Thank you very much. Lovely. Let's get my care package down here. Let's get the hell out of here, cloak. See what's in the care package. Please be good. Please be good. Please be good. Please be good. What is it? It is XS1 Vulcan. All right. Fun. I get to show you the laser satellite of death. And that is exact. Oh, airspace is too crowded. What's this point? Oh, someone else is sending one in. All right. Okay, let's launch an assault drone instead. That's the ion cannon over there, the XS1 Falcon. I've just got one of those. So once, once that goes off, we're going to have a fun time indeed. Hello. <laughs> uh, kill streaks are still fun. I'll definitely give them that. All right, let's get our ion cannon out. Let's have a little bit of fun with this thing, shall we? There we go. Oh, yes. There's one. Lovely. They're fun. Oh, God! <laughs> Definitely give them credit for that. Yeah, this is a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, this is the first time, I think, in probably ever that I don't have many qualms in recommending a Call of Duty title. And that is very unusual for me. I am not a fan of the series. This has convinced me that perhaps the series actually does have some life in it. As this is the most compelling Call of Duty I've played since 4? Yeah, I'd say so. S probably since Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. This is a real return to form for the franchise. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really happy with it. And if you don't mind, I'm going to go back to playing just a, a wee bit more of it. 
Oh, God, just... I also need to learn not to suck, but, you know, we're working on that. We're working on that. I still need to get good. But we're getting there. Ladies and gentlemen, my name has been Total Biscuit. A look at the multiplayer of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. And I am having a ruddy good time with it. It's currently available on Steam for $60 or your regional equivalent, as you might imagine, or the ridiculous $100 version, which... Don't, don't buy the $100 version. What the hell's wrong with you? And, of course, it's available on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One as well. PC version, needless to say, is, of course, in every way superior. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.